Good morning, everybody. I hope you all had a really good weekend and managed to get out and about and enjoy some of that sunshine. And we start with some photos of the week. And Mrs. O'Shea, some very impressive images here. This is a passion flower. And look at that, she's managed to capture two bees, really enjoying all that nectar on the flower. So thank you very much, beautiful photograph. And the second one she sent in, this was really lovely. She went paddle boarding and that is down at Hamworthy, Hamworthy Bay. And she managed to capture the sunset. So really lovely, fantastic photographs. So thank you, Mrs. O'Shea for those. Now, what did our grounds team spot as they were walking around campus? Ta -da! There it is, basking in the sun. That is a majestic and a totally harmless grass snake um, but the grounds team are a little bit surprised as they walked up and saw that but fantastic photo and I think they took a video clip as well so thank you very much to them for sending that in and I was sent this photo of a little fish peeping out from under the lily pad there it is coming to say hello so thank you for sending that one in and finally we have some very special photographs. So Mrs. Chaplio, she ran the Brighton Marathon yesterday to raise funds to beat Parkinson's disease. And uh, she did amazingly well. It was incredibly hot, but she managed to run a personal best. So can we say well done, Mrs. Chaplio? Well done, fantastic running. If you have geography with her today, Please, can you be kind and very helpful and cooperative and um, perhaps offer her a biscuit or a cup of tea. So what were you doing on Saturday evening? Maybe you were playing cards, a little bit of knitting, some gentle baking, or were you shouting at your television screen and biting your nails as you watched Emma Raducanu make tennis history by winning the US Women's Open. Let's have a watch. sentence <laughs> with some numbers that young kid that 18 year old qualifier ranked 150 in the world in her second ever major is one set away from her first grand slam title but watching play as a kid was lee now hmm. two-time grand slam champion can, can't you see that in her game absolutely yeah luke can you see lee now in raducano's game I see a lot of composure between those two. Yeah. First game, Just second no set. matter what's going on, the ability to block out the noise and stay with the program. Yeah. Game. Goes after that serve again. And she was there for it. Ronacano breaks again. It's 4-2 in the second. She's two you games away, this qualifier, from winning this thing. <laughs> she just, she guessed right, didn't she? Yeah, oh, a little so love from Rajan Rondo. Second yeah. Set. But that, this is, I mean, this is a game changer. More committed to that forehand, yeah. that center. Yeah. Oh, wow. How's that for an ending? She went 10 rounds without dropping a set. She came in here ranked 150 in the world and she leaves the U.S. Open champion. Say hello to Emma Raducanu.
it was a fantastic match. And she made history at the age of 18. She became the only qualifier ever to win the US Women's Open Championship, rather than any of the seeded players who were expected to do well. She did not lose a set over 10 matches against any of the players. Um, and hers is a really inspirational story. Owing to quarantining and uh, COVID visa restrictions, she didn't have any family or friends with her over that three week period. She just had her coaching team. Um, it was her first time in a Grand Slam final. It's only the second um, large tournament she's ever played in. Came in as a qualifier. Um, the huge crowd, I don't know if you saw, but the crowd is enormous at that, that uh, tennis arena. And they were very vocally supporting her opponent. So every time Fernandez won a point, the crowd erupted and went mad. And Emma Raducanu, every time she won a point, were very quiet. There were a handful of British supporters there cheering her on, um, doing their very best. But it was a very... Um, sort of hostile environment in which to play. And in the final game, she fell over and on the surface, she cut her leg and was bleeding, had to stop. They bandaged her up. Uh, her opponent got really agitated and cross and shouting. And she managed to block it all out. That atmosphere, the occasion, the fact it was a final, um, the fact that she just injured herself and hold her nerve to win that US um, Open Championship. Fantastic. And her face, when she was handed the trophy and a check for $2.5 million, she was given a check for, she didn't, you could see she couldn't really take in what was happening. She was uh, bemused, amazed, delighted. And there's a photograph I really like of her. This one, I just thought that says it all really. Um, a young person, she's just taken her A-levels. She could be like you, upper six. Uh, and she found herself in this situation, winning one of the top tennis trophies in the world. And she demonstrated incredible resilience and determination, but also those commentators were saying the ability to just focus on the task in hand, that next shot and shut out everything else around her, incredible maturity at a very young age. Now, she has become a tennis star overnight with a really bright future ahead of her. But we at Talbot Heath, we have a tennis academy here with lots of players. And I found this photograph of Emma. Let's have a look. <clears throat> so five years ago, Emma played uh, Talbot Heath pupil, Lauren John Baptiste. And that was in an international tournament, uh, Liverpool. It's a global tournament for junior players. And that was the final. And Emma won and beat Lauren. Um, but LJ is now a professional tennis player on the circuit. She's just graduated um, from a US university and she's doing really well. And Jodie Burridge, another former TH player, tennis academy player, she is also doing brilliantly on the world circuit. And she's going to talk to us about her tennis. Um, she's going to make a little film for speech date. So I look forward to seeing that. So tennis academy players here today, you could well be the Emma Raducanu's of the future, um, and you may well see, you're very likely to see TH players coming through and playing Emma in the next few years, maybe at Wimbledon and some of these big championships. So very exciting. Right, I'm now gonna go over to someone who's, who's known for his uh, topspin forehand. Are you there, Reverend Burke? I am, but I, I think you may be exaggerating a little, Mrs. Holloway. <laughs> And so as we celebrate sporting success seen in that amazing performance of Emma Raducanu, let us thank God for all that brings God, body, mind and spirit together, not least in sporting endeavour, through success, but also in competing and striving to do our very best in all that we do. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Have a brilliant week, everybody. Enjoy the good weather. Bye.